In the 2019 national budget, the Minister of Finance proposed a few changes to Zambia's mining tax regime. As well as introducing a 1.5% increase in mineral royalty rates, Margaret Monica also imposed a 5% import duty on copper concentrates and a 15% export duty on precious metals. Wanaka further abolished the value-added tax and replaced it with a non-refundable sales tax. The response from mining companies was an immediate threat to lay off workers and scale down their operations. If the 2019 budget proposals are enacted, Zambia will have by far the highest tax burden of mining countries, and more than half of the country's copper mines will become loss-making, claimed Goodwell Mateo, the president of the Chamber of Mines. The only operational response available, Mateo added, will be to scale back certain operations, reduce capital expenditure, and mine only the highest grades available. The unwanted effect of these survival measures will be lost production, lost investment, lost employment, and less supplies and goods procured from other parts of the economy. The new mining tax proposals have attracted plaudits from most Zambians who have long sought a fair proportion of the revenue from the country's mineral wealth. Opposition United Party for National Development UPND leader Hakane Tichilima is however not among them. Appearing on Radio Christian Voice's chat back program on 18 January 2019, Hichilima refused to render his support to the proposed tax measures and instead gave a series of elusive replies to the interviewer's questions on mining policy. So disenchanted about the government's tax proposals are mining companies, Hichilima revealed that they have told him they cannot wait for him to get elected to the presidency in order to sort out the mess in the sector. The mining companies are saying HH Hakane Hichilima we are waiting for you to come into power. We will pay the tax which you will introduce, because we know it is a fair tax. What do we make of all this? The first point to note is that Hichilima's comments on the proposed mining policy reveal his exceptional political ineptitude and raise serious questions about the nature of his relationship with mining companies. Is Hichilima the mines man? I personally could not believe that anyone in his position would publicly claim that mining companies are lining up a particular political leader and expressing a wish for that leader to take power immediately. Moreover, the UPND leader had absolutely no need to say what he did since the journalist did not ask him whether or not mining companies want him elected. All that the journalist sought was Hichilima's simple answer to a straightforward question, does he think mining taxes should be increased, decreased or stay the same? Hichilima struggled to provide a clear response and was frustratingly vague about what policies his government would implement in Zambia's crucial economic sector. Apart from promising to revert to a VAT tax mechanism, he failed to outline what exactly is wrong with the PF's approach to mining and what he would do differently. When Newsdigger subsequently gave him an opportunity to clarify his position on the new mining taxes, Hichilima remained largely elusive and devoted much of his response to denying accusations from the governing Patriotic Front PF that he is in the deep pockets of mining companies. Arguing that the ruling party deliberately twisted his comments in order to gain political mileage. It would be a costly mistake for Hichilima to think that it is only PF supporters who take issue with his pronouncements on the mining issue. Multinational mining companies in Zambia are not looked upon favorably by much of the country's population. I know many Zambians who do not support the PF, but who both support the new tax measures and have expressed huge disappointment with Hichilima's comments. Mining companies are presently engaged in what can only be termed as an attempt to blackmail Zambia. They have threatened to sack thousands of workers unless the taxes are reduced. The PF has commendably, if perhaps only temporarily, stood up to the mines who have had a sweet deal in Zambia in recent years. Hichilima however is choosing at this crucial juncture to identify himself with the mining companies. This will surely become a stone around his neck if he ever stands in another election. I know that division has become a characteristic of Zambia's politics. But there are certain sectors where it is in the best interest for everyone to pull together, particularly when it comes to guaranteeing the fundamental interests and security of citizens. 
For example, Zambia wins if there is a unified voice against the low public earnings from the mining sector resulting from the ineffectiveness of the Zambia Revenue Authority, low taxes, transfer pricing and poorly negotiated development agreements between mining companies and the government, the exploitation of Zambian workers or the dispossession of rural residents of their land and livelihoods, the prevention of instability in the country by avoiding business deals and political arrangements that would plunge the country into conflict i.e. uranium mining, nuclear energy, asylum for warmongers etc. or the acquisition of more public debt. Hichilema would do well to reflect on this point. The problem with the multinational mining companies in Africa is that they are the leaders of neo-colonial exploitation and expropriation. In real terms, Zambia gets far less from the mines today than it did in the early years of independence, particularly following the Mulungushi economic reforms of 1968 that increased the national stake in the sector. Zambian miners also get far less today in purchasing power parity and social benefits from the industry. The mining companies have devised various methods for ensuring that most of the value of the copper is collected by their shareholders and the company management. Yeah.